By now, experiments conducted by the CIA with LSD and other chemicals have been well documented. But did you know that they also tried to turn humans into robot-like assassins by planting electrodes in their brains? That's what military veterans have been fighting to make public for years. Some plaintiffs claiming the MRI scans confirmed that there were devices placed inside their brain without their knowledge. Now, in a lawsuit in California, a federal magistrate has ordered the CIA to produce records and witnesses about the experiments allegedly conducted on thousands of soldiers from 1950 to 1975. Except the documents on those devices planted in brains. Now, the CIA, of course, has been fighting tooth and nail to keep this information disclosed, and they claim that some of the documents are protected under the state's secrets privilege. But could the truth already be out there? Well, earlier, I caught up with Dr. Colin A. Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. Dr. Collins has obtained 15,000 pages of CIA documents through a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit. So I first asked him if anywhere in those documents there was evidence of electrodes being implanted into soldiers' brains. Uh, in the documents I have, which were actually all declassified in the 70s, it doesn't talk directly about those individuals, but it describes a series of different brain electrode implant programs in uh, different animals, dolphins, and human beings. So would it surprise you at all, or uh, I guess, you know, would you be convinced that they probably did, in fact, do these experiments on humans as well? It's not a question of opinion. There's uh, publications in the medical literature for instance, uh, Tulane, where brain electrodes are implanted in a homosexual guy to try and cure his homosexuality. There's uh, books and papers out of Harvard and Yale describing putting electrodes in cats, dogs, dolphins, and human beings to control their behavior. It's all published for real information. Uh, Dr. Ross, please tell me out of the documents that you've looked at, the research that you've done, some of the stories that you found to be the most shocking of experimentation done not only on soldiers but also just on uh, civilians. Well, one good example is a paper out of Tulane. Dr. Robert Heath was trying to cure a young man, a 19-year-old, of being homosexual. So he put electrodes in his brain and they were connected into a pleasure center and he gave the guy a box so he could push a button on the box and stimulate himself but they took it away because he pushed the box 1,500 times in three hours. And then what they did is they had him watch heterosexual pornography while stimulating him to a pre-orgasmic state to try and condition him into being straight. And then they brought in a prostitute that they hired. He had sex with the prostitute while they were monitoring his brain waves. And then they debriefed the, him and the prostitute to make sure that the sex went okay and he actually had an orgasm, which you would think would be a would never happen ever in the history of the human race, but it's published in a medical journal. Yeah, I mean, it's all rather disturbing when you think about it, but did these people actually volunteer for these experiments? Well, in that particular case, he volunteered and was you know, part of so-called regular medical treatment. In other experiments with the military, people were, for instance, given LSD when they were told virtually nothing about what it was or what the effects would be. And so consent could vary from relatively full to basically zero. Now, tell me this. Was it only uh, the CIA that was conducting these experiments? Was it other branches of the military? Do we, do we know exactly you know, who was responsible in each case? It's all interconnected, but it's the uh, Office of Scientific Research of the Air Force, the Office of Naval Research, the Department of the Army, and the CIA. And then they would funnel money often through National Institute of Health, uh, U.S. Public Health Service, and so on. Now, you also, you're, you're a psychiatrist. You work with people who have stress disorders. Have you worked with people that have uh, uh, said that they've undergone these types of experiments and, you know, all, then afterwards struggle, I guess, trying to, uh, you know, rehabilitate themselves? That's how I got interested in this, was when I moved to Dallas in 1990, late 91, early in 92. And I've heard hundreds of these stories since. People told me about being taken to labs or hospitals or military bases and being experimented on in these ways, uh, all for the purpose of creating new identities, amnesia barriers, Manchurian candidates. I didn't know if it was real, but I decided to look into it. Now, if you had to guess, would you say if the CIA could be conducting experiments like this today and we don't even know about it? Uh, yeah, I would say I'm personally certain that all the intelligence agencies around the world are running these kind of operations. Uh, we know at least a reasonable amount of it's going on at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay. There's no question about that. 
how much of the more fancy high level stuff is going on is all classified. Well, Dr. Ross, thank you so much for joining us. It's definitely always, uh, like I said, disturbing uh, and seems so inhumane and wrong to hear about these stories, but this is the truth. That's right. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.